Because we're primates, our psychology allows us to understand how people will react to us. And mirror neurons are an example of this. But you can also see it on a more macro level, where you have, for example, primates responding to other primates and trying to copy or mimic their behavior. You see this quite a lot in chimpanzee troops. You might think that this orangutan is washing socks as some kind of circus trick for which she's been specially trained, but not so. She is doing this entirely on her own initiative. She's seen others doing it and she's copying. Now, with street photography, we can do more or less the same thing. So if we're photographing on the street, sometimes people may object to this. They may not like being photographed because they don't know about the intentions or they may have their own ideas about privacy, which are entirely valid, that uh, they don't want to be photographed. Now, as photographers, we can't necessarily ask everybody in the street whether we can take their picture or not. If you photograph a crowd, that would be impractical. When we take photographs on the street, sometimes the best photographs are actually when people are not aware that we're photographing them. They're more candid and they can be more unique, more beautiful. If you ask people, either they'll say no on, uh, by default or they will pose, which is going to not look so good in the pictures either. If you look through the history of photography, some of the very, very best pictures I include subjects who weren't asked. Now, with photography, we can have a different approach, a different attitude on the street to make sure that the people who we photograph understand that we're photographing them because they're interesting, because they look interesting, look good, and uh, we have respect for them. This respect that we can show to people on the street makes the whole process better, and it also means that there's no knee-jerk reaction from the public that will ban street photography and ruin a passion that's enjoyed by millions of people. So one of the ways that I found to work best in street photography, the attitude that I found to work best, is not an aggressive attitude. It's actually what I call the idiot grin. That sounds ridiculous, and it is. But the idea essentially is that when you're photographing, you want to come across almost like somebody who's quite simple and has been gifted a camera and is having the time of their lives going around photographing everything around them. And they're doing it with a very naive, a very innocent uh, expression of their, their enjoyment of doing so. And so when you're photographing, you want to come across like uh, Gary Tank Commander or somebody similar. Here's some examples of him in action. Um, hiya. What's your name? Depends who's asking. I am Gare. I'm asking. Betty. Betty King. Betty King. Now that is a name fit for a queen. Do you think so? No doubt about it. Now, Betty, um, I think even a non-chip connoisseur among us would admit that whilst a decent attempt, this isn't quite a plate of chips. I have put extra on already. Come on, here's a bit another uh, chip on the block. All right, seeing as my Bobby likes his chips, he's the ex-forces. Oh aye, what's he up to now? Security guard? <laughs> no, thinks he's the boss of this place, but he's no, I am. Um... Sounds like my sergeant, he thinks that he's the boss, but he's no, I am. Um... Ah, and as we say in the army, may the forces be with you. Bon appetit. Gracias. Well, one thing I was thinking about was, right, because everyone's saying, oh, war's bad and all the rest of it, well, why don't we just invite the terrorists over to the UK? Like, you know, just to show them that it's not that bad. I'd be up for that. I'd be up for showing a terrorist a boot and that, eh? Because, like, I'd just take them out and, you know, like, we could maybe go to the cinema or go for a McDonald's or a Pizza Hut, Ken. I'd be like, I'll pay for it. There's meal deals, it's fine. Honestly, I'd just be like that to him, Ken. Just take that rucksack off, just chill out for a bit. It's absolutely fine, you know, and we could, we could go for a drink, we could have a beer. I'd just be like, do you want a beer? We'd get wrecked, talk shite for a bit. Honestly, I tell you, give me a couple of weeks and they'd be like that. Oh, I can't believe I was into that. I feel like a total mug, Ken, that way. But I guarantee you, after a while, right, after he sees it's all right, he'd get himself a two-bed and they'll get to bay, and that'd be him settled. The Queen... Uh, Her Majesty 
God rest her soul, peace be upon her, I think is a brilliant boss. Um, because she's never really there, you never really see her, eh? So she, she doesn't shout at you or that. Then I get any trouble, I've never been called into her office, eh? And she's like, ah, I quit's your game. That's never happened to me. So you can see that he's a friend of everybody. He's not aggressive in a, in a way, and he's just essentially playful. And that's how you want to be. You want to be seen as slightly naive, maybe a bit simple, and that's going to make people react to you in a better way because you're not disrespecting them, you're not challenging them with the act of photographing them. No one really gives a f what you photograph generally. Here, people do care. This is like a war zone. This style of street photography, popularized by Bruce Gilden and copied by Eric Kim, can create interesting photographs, but it upsets and disrespects people and could get street photography banned. The photographs can be quite serious. You can photograph people who are um, dangerous, you can photograph people in ways that are intrusive, but you can do so by giving them the upper hand. They come across as more intelligent and they're allowing you to take those photographs without you asking permission. So you can take pictures and if they object, then you can say, look, I'm really sorry. I didn't know you'd react that way. I'm really sorry and I'll delete the pictures. You then delete the photographs and you can say, look, I deleted the photographs. This is a new camera. I'm just having a nice time, just photographing people in the street. I didn't know you'd react that way. So by immediately saying that you didn't know they'd react that way, you're saying that it's not necessarily your fault that photography is some sort of a bad thing, but that their reaction is something that you didn't expect. You didn't expect it because it's unfamiliar to you. And it's unfamiliar to you because generally people enjoy being photographed when you're not deliberately disrespecting them by putting a camera in their face and saying, okay, well, I'm taking a picture and you either like it or you can shut up. So the idea with this is to show people respect and also give them the opportunity to take the upper hand to allow you to take the picture. After you've taken the photograph, you can smile uh, ear to ear in a very uh, naive, innocent way. And if you want to say anything at all, say, oh, it's great light or oh, it looks really good. The thing here I found is if you photograph somebody and then say, look, they look very good or they look really sexy, for example, or whatever it happens to be, that's going to potentially create a value judgment and they're going to potentially disagree with that. When you say that the light looks good, what you're saying to them is that as a photographer, you think the light looks good, you're photographing the light first and them second. Because most people aren't photographers, they can't really argue with that and generally it works out quite nicely. So again, you're photographing people from a position of positivity. You enjoy photographing the world. It's one of your hobbies, one of your pastimes. And when you're photographing people, you want to be giving them the respect and giving them the opportunity to take the upper hand and also be the first one to say, look, I'm sorry, didn't you react that way and delete the photograph. By doing this, you're creating a more enjoyable environment and you're giving photographers a good name so you avoid any potential backlash that people like the paparazzi and their aggressive tactics can cause and can uh, sway the public opinion to potentially creating laws against street photography. It's a hobby that we want to continue enjoying and therefore this is a very useful way to make sure that that happens, make sure that people are okay with being photographed, seeing it as a people enjoying uh, an innocuous and innocent hobby that they, that they enjoy. Now in terms of deleting the photographs, uh, that's something that uh, some people disagree with and if I really, really want to photograph then I know that I'm within my rights in many Western democracies to photograph people in a public place. There's no um, expectation of privacy, I believe. You can't harass people under law, of course, but generally taking photographs of people, even police and incidents is okay and you can check with the police in your local area to find out that that's okay. So if I really want the photographs, I can also say, look, you know, I understand uh, that you're upset, but uh, this is a photograph that I've taken. I'm not going to delete it. If you want, I'll stop taking those photographs, but I'm within my rights. And if you'd like, we can either have a chat with a police officer about this to find out, to reassure you that this is okay. And then maybe if you want to, you can explain, I'm not going to be using it commercially because you can't legally. And I'm not going to use it to defame you either, because again, you can't legally. You can use it for art and you can use it for documentary purposes. So do know your rights. And if you feel the need, do stand up for them. Generally, the photographs that I'm taking on the street, I don't mind uh, losing one or two if somebody has some sort of 
um, issue about being photographed, whether they're worried about privacy, whatever it happens to be, it's not really my concern, but I don't mind losing one or two pictures because I feel in abundance that there's more to take in the future. I'd rather not upset and disrespect somebody and, and lose a picture than, than get the picture and then worry about that later. So if it's really important and the photograph is something that has newsworthy content or is really important to you personally, you know, do know your rights and stand up for them. But the majority of time you want to be photographing with that innocent uh, enjoyment of photography that's going to make the process better for everybody, more enjoyable for everybody and allow us to keep photographing on the street for years to come. I'm Ben Evans. Have a look at www.shot.click, not .com, .click, uh, shot.click for information about photography. And please like and subscribe. And if you look in the comments below, there's uh, definitely lots of space to leave ideas for future videos. Thanks so much. You went to Disney World by yourself. Yeah, great guy so was. Got me picture taken with Goofy and everything. He's my favorite, Goofy. No, I can't tell if you're really motherfucking dumb or really motherfucking smart.